<laughs> hey, Mike. Hey, Anna. Have you received your package yet from Door West? I did this week and just in time because it's fireworks season coming up, isn't it? It is. And what you've got with this valerian compound and the skullcap and valerian tablets is a natural way to prepare your dog for the oncoming onslaught. So, yeah. So how does it how does it really work then? Well, it works by naturally relaxing dogs and it doesn't cause any drowsiness. So it just makes a dog feel less anxious in a whole variety of situations. But of course, at the moment, with fireworks coming up. But it's important to understand that when a dog is calm and relaxed, it's a perfect opportunity to train your dog, perhaps even desensitizing your dog with some sound therapy in advance as well. And you're very keen on Darwis, aren't you? You've used them for ages, haven't you? Yes. Oh, gosh. Um, Molly was a fan of several Door West products like their Keeper's Mix, which is this great all round, like a multivitamin herbal formula. But I love Door West as well because of their heritage. They're about to celebrate their 75th anniversary. And Joe Bowton White, the current managing director, is third generation of what is a stalwart family business that's been helping support pets wellness for all this time. And so if our listeners want to get some, where do they go? Head over to the doorwest.com website and maximize the 10% off for Dogs Life listeners by tapping in the promo code Dogs Life, all one word. And if you spend over £50, there's free delivery or simply call them on 01308 897 272. Hey, Mr. Binks, you know it's Halloween tomorrow. Oh, when things go all pumpkin and bat-like and spooky. Well, it's also time for trick and treating, which we approve of all year round. But we know it's important to feed the right treats and not to compromise feeding a natural diet with a super processed treat. That's why we're jumping on Zoom now to talk to Roz Lishak, the co-founder of By Benji. I'm Anna Webb. Welcome to A Dog's Life. Roz Lishak, welcome to A Dog's Life. Anna Webb, I'm thrilled to be here. Thanks for having us. No, it's absolutely brilliant. <laughs> it's kind of timely, really, because it is Halloween. Indeed. And Halloween <laughs> <laughs> means... A lot of trick and treating, doesn't oh, it, Ros? It's got to be had. And dressing up too, as we know by you and Mr Binks, I have to say. Well, we're dressing <laughs> up. We have to be, you know, quite mindful in how we promote it, to be absolutely honest with you. I mean, yeah. you know, lots of dogs I see that are dressed up to the nines utterly hate it, you know. Oh, for sure. But the odd pumpkin, you know, it is the season. But I hear you. I really do. No, trick-or-treating is, is, is perfectly allowed in my world. <laughs> absolutely. And it's something that shouldn't just be restricted to Halloween. You know, we should be trick-or-treating every single oh. day, Roz. Goodness, bring on the canine enrichment. I couldn't I couldn't agree more. But that's what we're all about here. Well, by Benji, it's um quite a new brand, isn't it, Ros? Yeah, we're about six years old, Anna. And I think that's probably when we first met you, to be honest. And do you know what? It's a funny thing about Bill Tong. If you'd asked somebody probably six years ago about Bill Tong, that they wouldn't know what the product was. And it's fabulous for us that it's come into the human world. I mean, six years ago, we were educating people. And now if you say to people about Bill Tong, they've actually heard about it because it is derivative of a human product. But that was the that was the idea, Anna. That was the thing. It's a power packed product for humans, pure, raw beef. And why not for dogs? Well, of course, the human variety, full of chilies and spices, not appropriate. But Richard, who is the founder and a South African, uh, knew the power of it and therefore adapted it, took out all the things that aren't dog appropriate and trialled it. And it has been, as you say, it has been just a wonder and um, just just the, just the best approach of, of treating with, with the natural approach that you can find. I mean, it's just, I'll tell you about the secret spell if you really want to know. 
<laughs> Secret spell. The do, spell do, 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 gets... do, do, the spell. <laughs> Tell us more. The magic formula that gets dogs under under our spell, Anna, is of course is the marinating. The beef is marinated. I mean, it's not rocket science. If you've got a slab of beef and then you've got a slab of marinated beef, you know, which one is the dog gonna go for? And that's the secret. We are, we marinate every piece and therefore their nose is attracted. And that leads you on to high value, I guess. That's the power of having something they can actually be attracted to. Yes, I mean, when you say marinade, I mean, I think my dogs, um, to be honest, they're, they're not fussy. You know, I, I do <laughs> believe you train fussy eaters, actually. Oh, gosh, in, in yes. Maine. You really do. I, th- I think it's the same with toddlers. I'm not that I've had one so I don't really know but you know those children that will only eat ice cream yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean they're only fussy until they've found what they actually like and then there you go they're not fussy anymore exactly exactly so well but I'm not asking you to disclose the secret <laughs> spell of the marinade but I do love that idea actually to <laughs> kind of I suppose permeate the meat uh, exactly. perhaps make it a little juicier that's exactly Exactly right. It does. It infuses and it takes time. You know, it's it's interesting what people can call a, a marinated treat or, or or make. I call it niltong if people say biltong is biltong. And if it's not marinated, I call it niltong. <laughs> but actually, it takes time to permeate. That's exactly what it does. And we hang it and we replicate the natural process of biltong. I think in South Africa, I believe it was hung out to dry. And then the wind and warmth, Anna, it kind of the, the meat just just dries in the air with the wind and the natural elements and therefore it, that it, with no direct heat all the goodness stays in the beef and that's the power of it it stays dry to, it's beautiful in fact the lovely thing people were just talking to someone earlier today about using how they were surprised how dry it is to hand you can imagine you're taking your go out to training sticking your hand within you know cheese and other things that might get all over your hand with an air dried tree your hands are perfectly dry all year round and that's one of the bonuses too but with the flavor and the infusion that's the secret we do marinate and that keeps them under the spell the spell of by benji i know i mean my dogs honestly they know when there's by benji in my pocket but you've hit on so, oh so many interesting things from a yeah. dog training point of yeah. view there Roz, that i champion all the time my one thing is it frustrates me when people have their treats in packets when oh, when they're oh. out training because by the time you've opened your packet yeah. put your hand in got the treat out you've missed the moment you may exactly. as well not bother at that point exactly. so I always say buy clothes with pockets once mm-hmm. you have a dog in your life you have to have pockets all mm-hmm. the time <laughs> and always have some treats in your pocket because you never know when you want to do a bit of positive reinforcement it might be when you're on the platform waiting for a train yes. or a bus stop Yes. might be when you're on the bus just sitting there really great to have a little treat to hand just whip it out and that's exactly. of course where air drying you see because you know I'm into feeding raw everybody sure. knows that sure. yeah yeah so that's why I love biltong actually I love by Benji because it is essentially raw Absolutely and air drying to raw. you're right yeah No, absolutely. But you see, air drying for me, it is a processing technique, let's face it. I mean, even freezing, if Uh you're going to get really technical about processing, you know, freezing is a processing, but that's going a a bit extreme. Okay. (laughs) But air drying is is really interesting because I actually believe it's the least invasive, even than freeze drying. What do you think? No, a hundred percent. It really is the fact that you're letting the nat you're letting nature do do its work. We we air dry with we we call them built on cabins, but if you can imagine they're closed and the air is just rotated. It it does absolutely replicate the natural air. There's no direct heat, there's no oven, there's no flame. It just lets the temperature of the air rotate around the product and again that takes time it's it's a it's a slow and so it should do to, to keep to keep it natural it takes time to create and you don't cut corners which I like you know well, that we really you don't do- you do take the time I suppose well, what you could do I suppose is blast it in a sauna or something <laughs> and um I don't know do you know what there must be some secret bills on is who do sneak a bit of building in the sauna but why not <laughs> <laughs> having a quick munch on it maybe when it's, they're in there at the same time I don't know a luxury why not 
<laughs> but I love the range as well because that's it that's grown, hasn't it, since the, the start? Indeed. What's lovely also, Anna, I know you know it very well, but just to say it's one product but in five different textures. So they all have a meaning. In fact, I'll take well, I, I know what you're asking. We will go into the fifth one, which is my which is my latest baby, as it were. We've got the biltong itself, which is the biltong stick, and that's how it's hung. And many times you've seen yourself that we can still see the skew a little hole at the top to prove where it's been hanging and you can see that stick um, and they're great for tug toys they're also great for hanging on to the end and letting dogs have a good natural chew nothing better as you know for them to getting their dental regime and um, flesh on flesh it's the simplest way I can't I never know why people want to stick something plastic in a dog's mouth um, I, I don't get it myself but I or, or something that is synthetic the most natural way for a dog to, to get their saliva going is, is, is flesh on flesh and we love seeing the dogs enjoying those plus they can be cut down to a treat so that's how we get the treat so there's a treat size and a long stick we also have which i call the burger to the steak anna it's the sausage and that's so <laughs> versatile it's even more it's still marinated but it's beautiful that you can crumble it down to small pieces and the latest thing is that we're calling them a pill popper i call them a pill tom well you know i would if there's a pun anna i'm going to find it a you pill will. Tom. <laughs> oh <laughs> good idea to put medication it, you can in. stick medication i mean having great feedback by people who use the cut treats but at the side end just wrap the sausage around it and of course because it's high value with a good smell and a good aroma they just concentrate on that so the times that you spend with them getting in those eyes and then spitting the pill out they will concentrate on the treat rather than the treatment and I love the fact that they they, they get another treat afterwards and it's it, nothing is a problem by, by medication time it just takes the strain out of that but the latest one I think you were hinting which is my favourite is our canine condiment Anna it's our built on topper which is becoming a game changer for so many so many ways you can use it within toys within canine enrichment toys to sprinkle it over it's a ground built on with herbs it's almost like um it's like a sort of a a, a, a pepper oh, i say pepper there isn't pepper but it's a kind of that texture imagine grinding a pepper it's that kind of texture it's a sprinkle of a of a, of a condiment um and it's a mixture of it and also i think you can use it on top of food. Now, I'll give you an example. We had lovely Rufus, one of our Biltong ears. He's a little Pomeranian who had to change his diet. Um, and bless him, he did love his food, but he had to change his diet. And I had a, a message from his, from a sort of plea from his owner. Um, didn't know what to do. He would turn up his, look at the look at the bowl, look at his owner and walk away. He just didn't, didn't want his food anymore. This was the new food regime. I said, you have to try this. So she took away a little pouch of, of, of the topper. And I've got a fantastic vid, which I could, could send you of little Rufus having a sniff looking up getting a bit nearer and having another sniff, and suddenly realizing that what was in the sprinkle he, she'd sprinkled it over his food and he thought it was by Benji and the first time it was very emotional the first time he actually finished the plate Oh. so it just encourages them and it, yeah. it was just just incredible we, we, so it's very exciting because we don't produce food for a treat but we can get involved in people with their menus and having problems with their, their, their diet well no it's a really good idea you know and I know when I get the by Benji out I mean mm. I use it as a high value treat uh -huh. and reward you know and when you're training it's good to have a range of different treats of for different aspects of training so if you're training a new trick then you use something very high value so mm. that's when I'll grab the by Benji or you're training a puppy and uh, you go in and people go oh my god that's amazing Anna oh how did you yeah. do that and I think oh if only they knew uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> it's got a lot to do with the by Benji I think it does um, and it's it's interesting you talk about puppies too, Anna, because trainers are really keen. Uh, again, if you're going to take your, your dog to a to a class, it's a bit like taking your, your child to school to do the homework and they and they go home and they're using a different textbook. You're using a treat within a class that the trainer would recommend. So you need to take a home and, and, and consistently give them that so that they know that they, they continue their practice, they continue their work. And we've had such wonderful feedback from young, they learn such so much quicker and more forcefully with with by Benji with a high value and you're absolutely right about a multiple range of treats you can't you shouldn't give a high value all the time they've got to work for it they've got to know what is what it is that they're doing is is the reward 
exactly, exactly. But I like to do. I love. I love interactive toys, Roz. You know, they're they're so great to punctuate a dog's day. I mean, that's why Prudence is being quite quiet at the moment as she is now tucking into a Kong. But I like by Benji in a Kong, and then just to kind of keep the by Benji in there, make it harder for Prue to get it out. Oh, I'll sure. stuff banana. You know, because oh. I love banana in a Kong. Don't you wish you could be a dog? <laughs> 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 and then you know you've got that I always think nice textures contrasting textures oh, 100% being, it's all yeah. about the interest isn't it I think also it makes it last longer I mean you want them to be I always call it like sort of the occupational therapy or you know in some respect it, it, it's it's self that they, they look after that they're self-independently looking after themselves by by into training themselves that's 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 what we call it <laughs> <laughs> <Into> training <laughs> gosh that's a good one I may have to use that I'll let you use that one Anna <laughs> <laughs> that, into training but I don't think I've ever told you this actually Ross. Was here that? we go drum roll do, 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 do. my cat gremlin goes bonkers for by Benji oh that's amazing actually yeah. he's not the first but that's incredible I, I love the fact that that, that, that you're by petrol <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yes, absolutely. No, Gremlin. Well, gosh, she's 12 now, you know, my cat. So um, he's been, uh, yeah, he's a stalwart. You know, some people actually say he's the sanest person in this flat. (laughs) Actually, I wonder why. (laughs) We do get asked, we get asked a lot whether we should produce a cat range. But you know what? Cats, well, you'll know, cats are far more mercurial. They'll they'll someday yes, someday no. They'll they'll, they'll do you a favour. And actually, there it is in its entirety, just proof that built on is built on for, for dog and cat. I don't think we have to create something special. It is specifically for cats. If they like beef, then absolutely, you know, go for it. <laughs> proof. <laughs> well, yeah, um, no, indeed. And I think, you know, if only people would try and train their cats a bit, you know, some yeah. people think it's impossible to train a cat, which is utter rubbish, oh, actually. Gosh, no. yeah. And again, feeding a cat as nature intended. I think, 100%. you know, there's less cats eating how they should eat than dogs. I think now yeah, I don't know yeah. about that actually and I feel that if cats you know were fed on meat which yeah. obviously they are yeah. obligate carnivores they, they'd obviously be you know better healthier and all the rest of it you know and more willing to learn it's interesting and as well as raw because we were on that we were on that subject I know it, I people are more you're talking about food towards treat we are a treat but actually if you think about it I think there's a lot of focus of people obviously naturally concerned about the diet and their bowl and you know it's almost as if the treat is the bridesmaid in some respect you're careful and you put all that work into doing the correct feeding regime food you weigh it you measure it you consider it and when it comes to a treat people aren't always that that conscious of things I remember there was a story once I don't know the results but I'll just remind myself is that I remember there was a family once who who decided to actually find out what who, who the weak link in the family was for a start who fed the dog but so they stuck a little a little camera onto the dog's collar for the day to see the dog's like the, what the dog actually ate rather than what they thought the dog actually ate. and it was very interesting as I say to see who the weak link in the family was giving them the end of their own treats but actually if you do if you're careful that your dog is a little bit avarice a little bit you know food food driven then you, why would you do all that great work in the bowl and not have a healthy treat you know why ruin it if, if you think you're doing raw you are concentrating on a raw diet but not not considering the treat surely everything goes out of balance you've got it in one absolutely I mean I've spoken out about this on Mm. quite a few occasions to be honest with you and it is where a lot of people fall over mainly because you know obviously to have something you know, technically raw in your pocket <laughs> yes. is is a bit eek and it's where air dried solutions really do come in um, exactly. into their own so that's that's the thing you know, it depends how extreme you are I think I'm extreme I'm, I will go out with a bit of cheese in my pocket if, yeah. if I have to you know that's fine I don't mind if I smell of cheese but well, just um, if you get hungry yourself there Anna you know well, exactly in case you know you're out, <laughs> out walking you might need a little snack a little boost <laughs> absolutely but yeah Yes, no, indeed. So again, to look at the whole regime of what you're feeding yeah. your dog, treats in, included, also as well to maintain weight, because a by Benji is not going to be at all fattening for your dog because it is 100% meat. 
Yeah, mm. I'll break it down for us. Yes, go the, on. The, the stick itself is the 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 long the sticks itself are about twenty kcal, and they break down into ten. So each treat is rough, approximately two kcal. So you know you can really factor that into a daily regime. And of course, treats are. I mean, I always say this to people: treats are a treat. There's focus on the word treat. It's not the food. You know, don't eat the whole bag. They'll want to, but the, but but you don't have to. And the beautiful thing is because of the taste, and you've seen this yourself, Anna, with the dogs licking their lips. That's the sign that they can still taste it they will give you the puppy dog eyes they will want another but it's actually they don't open the bag you do so you've got to be careful about really being 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 quite strong and saying no you've had yours and enough and I think that's a bigger problem as well if only dogs could open the bags themselves <laughs> well then I think they wouldn't stop I think that's the one difference because they're scavengers you know exactly. they're pre-programmed to think well this could be our last this meal. could be the last meal <laughs> you know, yeah. so and I want better. it to be by then Yes, we want it, you know, to be the tastiest and the best. But I think what it is for me is that because by Benji is meat, okay, rather than biscuit, for example, nothing but calories. Yeah, yeah, the calories they're consuming will be absorbed bioavailably through the gut and not create sugar and then sugar creates fat so that's that's really in a way why most of the dogs in the UK well there is this obesity crisis one in two I think the animal welfare agencies are saying yeah. at the moment is because you know most dogs do still eat a kibble based diet you see which is between 40 and 70 wow. percent sugar I know I know yeah. you see yeah. this is the thing it's full of rice yeah. and barley and wheat and other ingredients so um, rather than just pure meat. But this is why I'm so proud to be chatting with you, Roz, because I've Aww. seen the journey of by Benji. And um, I love I love the way as well you have your throne. We do. That all beca- now, people have asked us about the throne. We are that crazy when we do a sh- when we do a show or a stand or or we're out in a, in a pavilion in, in a in a in a dog show um, or an exhibition. Yes, we do have. A living, breathing, live sofa with us in on, <laughs> outside. Um, it replicates basically what happened. We wanted dogs. This is way before um, sort of furniture became a, bi- a big thing in the industry. We actually thought about the dog having that indulgent moment, just sitting back. And what do you do? You want to get on that furniture, lay back, enjoy your moment. And therefore, we just had this indulgent, indulgent thought. The throne became it became an icon to our visitors they 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 make it to the stand they walk the red carpet they come and have their moment on the throne and it has become a joint thing it's become a symbiotic thing where i think the humans love it even more than the dogs now so <laughs> which is great but i think also it, it it's just part of the part of the um should we say the picture that we paint when when we have our product it really is indulgent and just sit back and enjoy your enjoy your moment Yes, no, absolutely. And I think, you know, this whole idea of encouraging people to use the product wisely and for training is spreading such a positive message, Roz, because for me, you can never train your dog enough. You know, training a trick is is great, but also training the right behavior. So stop pulling on the lead or, you know, barking when you're out and about all of these different aspects. But training tricks is is great fun. I mean, I'm I'm quite proud. I love training tricks. (laughs) Oh, 100 percent. But I do think it's fair to say, though, if you ask any pet person what the most one element of training that they put that they put more work into it's obviously recall i mean these days you want your dog to stop what they're doing and recall but the trick part of training is it's just astounding we've had dogs we've had dogs on film doing dance uh, i mean twirling dancing choosing even we have a little um a little pujon who actually loves ringing a bell for her treats bless her little sydney oh, um, you know, tra- 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 oh, lovely. ring that bell and the treat will come but they are far more intelligent the more you can keep them interested in anything they're doing it take it's it breaks the boredom we talk about boredom busters a lot in the trade don't we and we with anything that, that keeps their mind occupied it just raises their game as, as happiness and then again if, if your dog's happy you're happy ultimately absolutely and and keeping dogs in sound mental health is yes. so important yeah so you know just as it is for us you know we, we know all about that on a human we level do. We so do. I think it is important to tap into your dog's natural instincts to scavenge yeah. find things you know hide a bit of by benji under a plant pot in the garden and then ask exactly. your dog to find it that's exactly. a great game and you know you can transfer that to being a yeah. tennis ball that's how all you know explosive dogs begin their learning
learning. The, the craziest one I've had recently, and again, I will send you, I, I can't remember if you've seen it. Um, we had a fantastic example of deep boredom busting. Um, somebody took an egg box, an empty egg box, and, and filled that up with a little by Benji, closed it, wrapped that in paper, put that in a box, put the box in another box, and just sat it in the middle of the room. And the dog sniffed and sniffed and sniffed, and then caught the end of the box and then went into the other box. I mean, the, the, I think the film when they sent me was actually sort of edited version. It took it took over an hour for this dog just to work it all out. But how fantastic a game is that? It's not expensive, a couple of boxes and an egg box, you know, that's bored and busting on basic level. It's just, you have to get creative and inventive with this. And I think, you know, the more you do, the more, the more fun it is. And uh, we've had some great results. We, we also, I know that, you know, we work with assistance dogs, we work with nervous dogs and sort of also, you know, for, for agility, all, all the agility, flyball and, and hoopers, they all have a purpose with a good high value treat. And at, and at trick or treat time, we, we, are, we are amazed at the inventiveness and the creativity that we, get, that we see with it. We really are. No, I know. I know it is Halloween. I'm, I might put Binks's hat, Mr. Binks, you know, the co-host, obviously, of A Dog's All Life. Of Mr. Yes, Binks. I Who might I call put the it... one-hit wonder, as you know, Anna. I know, the one-hit <laughs> wonder. Well, he is, really. It's quite remarkable. <laughs> um, I, mean, I know, and, and we went to our Best Vets last week, uh-huh. and, and just for general checkups and all the rest of it, so yeah. I do that annually. And she said, Anna, gosh, I do think his leg is looking more muscly, you know, and yeah. Yeah. So I'm really pleased. Mr. Binks, you know, he's news, doing Mr. so well. B. And he loves wearing his his pumpkin hat. And well, then of he course he suits, he suits it. And then he's got his orange equi fleece, which then makes him look like a pumpkin, obviously. So <laughs> I'm sure there'll be some posts coming out. But, you know, the funny thing, I mean, pumpkin as well, yeah. as well as biltong, is an extremely nutritious food also oh, for dogs. Oh, yeah. So in a way, there's lots to be learnt from Halloween. Training your dog, nutrition for your dog, yeah. having fun with your dog, and just enrichment, Roz. On any level, there's always, there's no excuse. I have to say, this, we, we talk about red letter days along the calendar, but this is one of them. I think the fact that we can have a trick or treat and... And, and, and gain something together as a bond. I'm a big fan of bonding between humans and hounds. It really is so important. And so on so many levels, as you said, over the last couple of years, I mean, particularly as we approach the shows, you must have seen it yourself getting out and about now as we do. People are so excited to see each other. The dogs are happy that the humans are happy and everyone's back sort of sniffing around and particularly for those dogs who who emerged during lockdown I mean it just it's just seeing another dog I mean it's it's great how how important is socializing for goodness sake you know it's it's, it's any t- any gathering of, of hounds is, is is that we're big fans of we really are well it is it is great and it is a club you know it's a community yeah. and I think we're very lucky for dog owners to have you know pet parents to have all the events that we do now and have so many venues that are dog friendly because honestly yeah. it hasn't always been like this at all no and i've just yeah i've just come back from another dog friendly cafe and, and it's so important the funny thing is though as you probably know people talk to the dogs and not the humans it's it, people come in and they recognize the dogs that hello 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 Freddy, hello, Jeannie, you know, whatever the dog. And, the, you know, you talk, people talk to the dogs, but their faces light up. I had a privilege a little while ago um, to, in my, um, in my hospital radio world a, a little while ago, I was, I was asked to, to go and, and follow pets as therapy. And you, you must have done this a lot, I know. Um, and I went into Royal Free Hospital um, to follow a dog for the day who was, who was doing his pet therapy visit. And the extraordinary thing that hit me really more than anything was, yes, it was for the patients, but the staff, obviously the strains of, of being a staff, um, all members of staff, as soon as they saw little Rolo, their face lit up. You know, what, what more can you say? It, it, it's just they break down barriers and they're, you know, it, it's therapy all on its own. Well, I think, honestly, yes, we can't really describe all of the benefits that dogs bring to mankind you know saying they're man's best friend seems a little bit glib you know for 30,000 years they've played this integral role you know and I I think we just can't totally define it yes they make us smile yes they make us live longer all of these things we're constantly pushing science to try and get to the nub of it but I think it's because they're so ingrained in us and what upsets me is that sometimes I think you know we're not 
doing justice to dogs you know there's a lot by Benji is and bring that on you know and that's a great thing but I think you know we could all do a little bit better we could all train our dogs a little bit more we could all walk our dogs a little bit more you know what it's like there's always somewhere to go yeah exactly and including them I mean I think this is the thing of society now we talk about dog friendly cafes years ago was 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 quite the opposite you wouldn't have wanted a dog to 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 come in I mean wait wait outside play even places to tie your dogs up all the time you know thankfully more more people are inclusive and and and, and long may that may you know long more may that happen um you know we, we're, we're big advocates of, of of that for sure and also of all the tra- of traditional methods as well of of of, of feeding all all that we can the authenticity of everything is what we're about which is which is a big thing for us it really is no it's brilliant and it certainly is reflected in the end product Ross. Oh, you know. thank you as i say it, it, it is a surprise as i say going back and saying it's an education the importance of human built on versus dog friendly built on because i mean with more built on coming in into the market people think that you can just all well, i'm i'll just give my dog the end and of course it's so we all know those little bits drip into into more and more but it's the high salt content and it's the chilies and the spices and all the things that aren't dog appropriate that make built on make built on fun for humans because of the, all of the full-on you know power packed of, of, of a human built on but of course we stripped it back and we make it purely with herbs and therefore it's utterly in fact if you want i mean it, it is it's a healthier for humans of course we can't sell it to humans but actually we know we know of humans who do eat it well ros <laughs> here we go i must admit <laughs> Here we go. The big admission. Um, sometimes I will have a little munch when I'm I was out. waiting, Anna. One for me, you know, one for you. Yeah, that's it. It it is awfully tasty, you know. So um, there we go. You and... never go hungry on a walk with my Benji. You know that, then. <laughs> Indeed not. Oh well, Ros. Happy trick and treating and um, oh, thank happy you. Halloween. And to you, listen, it's been a joy and we hope to see you, Mr. Binks, very, very soon. You will, I'm sure. Can't wait. <laughs> Bless you, Anna. Take care. That's our show, Mr. Binks. What do you think? Yes, I know you're a fan of by Benji. Yes, we could have some more in a minute. And yes, you're right, it is time for Woof of the Week. We know how important treats are, but don't undermine your natural diet by feeding over-processed treats. Stick to natural alternatives only. Well, I hope you all enjoyed it. If you did, please rate and review the show wherever you tune into your podcasts. Thanks again to Ros Lishak for joining us today and all the links to Buy Benji are in the show notes. Thanks, of course, to my producer, Mike Hansen, for all the production and music as usual. Find out more about him at Pod People UK. And for me, I'm just at Anna Webb Dogs. What's that, Mr. Binks? Yes, you're right. We will be back in your feed next Sunday. So why don't you subscribe now? It's free. It's free free and that way you'll never miss another show bye for now